New Testament Slavery This is not a discussion on slavery in Judaic times. This is a discussion about what the New Testament says about slavery. The casual reader observes the Bible does not reject slavery in the way a politically correct person would do. It does condemn liars, however. Matthew 23 verse 13 But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Luke 6 verse 39 And he spake a parable unto them, Can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? However, secularists point to 1 Peter 2 verse 18 as a troublesome passage. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. The passage suggests we not just that we put up with those who have authority but that we obey even the worst tyrant. This sentiment is repeated in Ephesians 6 verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as under Christ, six not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, seven with good will doing service, as to the Lord, and not to men. Christians are expected to respond to secular authority, our rulers and bosses and even our owners, as we would respond to Christ himself. It is not enough to obey those in authority, but we must obey gladly and with eagerness. Christians do not just follow the letter of the law, we obey Jesus as if what he tells us is from someone we love and wanted to please. This is a hard teaching and let's admit it, impossible for human beings to follow. But this is the standard we are to follow. We do not obey men to glorify men but to demonstrate the depth of our love for Jesus. Our lives, even in the most trying of times ought to illustrate the forgiveness God offers to the world. 2 Timothy 2 9 exhorts servants to be obedient unto their own masters, and to please them well in all things, not answering again, ten not purloining, but shewing all good fidelity, that they may adorn the doctrine of God our Savior in all things. The point to remember, Jesus lived in the world and taught us how to live in the world as it exists as a product of sinful and fallen men, this does not mean the church was to copy the sinful ways of godless men. The instructions on slavery are akin to instructions on how to behave if adrift in a lifeboat. Jesus does not want us to be adrift in a lifeboat nor under the authority of fallen man. He does tell us how to respond if we put ourselves in this situation. The full text of Ephesians actually tempers the teaching given about how to respond as a servant. Ephesians 6 verse 5 Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart, as unto Christ, six not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, seven with good will doing service, as to the Lord, and not to men, eight knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Nine and, ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is their respective persons with him. There is a reward for the willing servant but there is also a teaching for the master. He is told not to threaten, and to remember as you have a servant also you have a master in heaven. Colossians repeats this teaching. Colossians 4 verse 1 Masters, give unto your servants that which is just and equal, knowing that ye also have a master in heaven. While James goes on to say, we ought not to assume authority over many because it is us who will receive the greater condemnation. This even seems to suggest that if you have taken up authority over men you assume the sins of those whom you command to sin. James 3 verse 1 My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. The station of servant is not an evil in the eyes of Jesus. We are not on earth to be selfish and ensure we come out on top. We are not in competition for glory but called to be servants. Mark 9.35 And he sat down, and called the twelve, and saith unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, and servant of all. Jesus did not come to lord it over people or to wield the whip of a slave owner. Mark 10.45 For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Ephesians 207 But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. In the house of God, we are friends, brothers, and sisters, we serve each other as persons we love and respect. Indeed, it is this very position of servants done in submission that lifts us out of our station and makes us family. John 15 14 Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. 15 Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth 
but I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. 16 Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Jesus paid to release us from bondage to men. We were not created to be servants. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 23 Ye are bought with a price, be not ye the servants of men. We are part of the family of God. Galatians. For colon 7 Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. If we are a member of the household of Jesus, who ought we to serve? Matthew. 624 No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. If we are serving Christ, how can we serve our own interests as masters? It is only by adopting the mantle of a servant that we can serve Christ by serving others in his name. Matthew 23.10 Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. 11 But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. 12 And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The passages on slavery drive home the point made in other ways and in other places. We ought to focus our energies on finding fault with our own selves and in trying to be good representatives of our faith. It is not for us to feel superior to others because we are a servant or are suffering for Christ. The man in authority has his own sins to deal with and we have ours. The worst thing one can be is a slave owner, because now one is totally focused on the failings of the slave rather than those of one's own soul. 1 Thessalonians 6. One let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. 2. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren, but rather do them service, because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. Peter says it best. We are free under Christ because we are free of the slavery of sin. We ought not to use this freedom to harm others. 1 Peter 2.16 is free, and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. 17. Honor all men. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. 19. For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. 20. For what glory is it, if, when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if, when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. Keep our eye on the prize. It is not in this world that we build up treasure. As servants we enrich others. Time and moth will destroy this. All the treasures of this world will be tested in fire. It will all come to an end. What benefit if we gain freedom for the flesh but remain dead in sin? To give in to the slavery of the flesh is to put oneself under the law of sin. The teachings about slavery are not simply about dealing with issues of the flesh it's about whose house we life in, whose grace we live under. To contend with our earthly authorities is to put ourselves under the obedience to sin, for we respond to sin as the world responds to sin. We are under grace and must respond with grace. Romans 6.14 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. 15 What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. 16 Know ye not, that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness? 17 But God be thanked, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. 18 Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. 19 I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. 20 For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. 21 What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. 22 But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord.
There are